Hey guys, welcome to the Sports Latte. It's your host, Janae Robinson. And, you know, we talk to different athletes every week, hear about how the industry has impacted them and how they have contributed to the industry. Now, this week, we have another special guest. She's not just, you know, you guys may know her from running hurdles, you know. Um, we have Geneva Russell. She has accomplished many from high school right up to the Olympics. So, you know, she's a big deal. So welcome, Jenny Russell. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited. <laughs> okay, so we're going to just go into the first question and mm -hmm. let's just talk. So who is Jenny Russell? Well, um, Jenny Russell is a very jovial person. I like to have fun. I like to give jokes. But the jokes just, I don't just write down jokes and the jokes just come off of the bat. Um, I'm a very easygoing person, easy to talk to. I like to motivate others. So in a nutshell, I'm just an easygoing person. Lovely, lovely. So how did the whole journey of the game was it that you've always wanted to do? Um, well, yes. Well, I always want to be an athlete. Um, I grew up with my sister, my older sister. She was very active in school. She used to play netball. She ran at every sports day. And to see the joy that it gave my mother and her face, you know, going to sports day with your mommy, your mommy cheering on your sister. I wanted to be like my sister. But first it was um, netball, but I wasn't really that good at netball. I had an incident where I was playing netball for my primary school. My skirt fell off. So that was just like an eye opener for me. <laughs> yeah, that was just an eye opener for me. And then I started to get into track and field because my sister started to push me to track and field more because she was telling me that she didn't take up the opportunity to get the scholarship to Homewood. So she just continued to GSAT and went to her high school and she was saying that I shouldn't miss out on that opportunity. So my sister and my mother um, basically just started this journey for me. What is something that you ever thought about? Am I able to do this kind of nice? Um, do I really want to do this? Or was it just because of the motivation of your family? Why you did it? It all started from the motivation of my family. And then growing up watching elite athletes, you know, reading about Dan Hemmings, watching Elaine Walker, Kali Spencer, you know the work, Sherwin Simpson. And the joy that it gives Jamaicans to watch these people at the World Championship, the Olympic Games, and even chance, you know, because my sister participated at chance. And the joy that it gave my mother, the excitement for her to actually want to go to the Boys and Girls Championship. Um, I think that was a next thing that pushed me and motivated me to pursue this as my career. Okay. So if people don't know, Janine went to Homewood. Homewood is... Um, I would say one of the top big girl schools um, that participates in the ISA Boys and Girls Champs. So not only do you have the pressure of your family, not necessarily mm -hmm. pressure, but you know, they're there rooting for you. Now you're at a school that has a reputation for doing well. Tell us about your journey at that school, at Homewood. My journey was up and down. The pressure was coming from fans, persons who expect Homewood to win champs all the time, because I went into Homewood as the, the, the top high school in the country at the time. Mm -hmm. They were winning boys and girls championship. They were dominating. And at a tender age, I started home when I was 10, because I was supposed to repeat grade six. So I was in grade eight at the age of 10. And I felt really pressured in my first year, not by coaches or anybody, but, you know, schoolmates are saying that they want this from you. They're expecting this from you. They want you to carry home the championship. It was like, you're the only person they're running, although it was a team effort. Yeah. And then by the, from the elite athletes at the time, there was Celsius Slack, Anastasia Leroy, Anisha McClucking. They sat me down and saying that we're class four. Yes, they expect points from class four students, but remember you have more years in class four. Don't just take out the pressure and have fun. And at the time, my coach, Mr. Maurice Wilson, said similar things to me. And in my second year, class four, I just started to have fun. And then when I started to have fun, focus on myself, that's when I was just continuing to progress well at the Boys and Girls Championship and perform to the best of my ability. Lovely, lovely. So, um, Get a chance experience because I'm sure you did 
well at champs. You that just now you do it well. <laughs> Listen, my champs experience, as I said before, up and down. My first year class four, I think I came 14 in the 100, I didn't make the semifinals. In the 200, I scraped through for the 200 finals and got lane one. Listen, I ball, I ball, I ball, I ball, I ball, I ball, I ball. Because as I said, in you know, my first year, you're going to, a, you're going to a, um, a school that is the top girls school for boys and girls championship. You're expecting to give points. You want to know you go back to home where everybody's celebrating. You say this person um, helped to win the championship. And when I found out that I had limited 200, I never made 200 a policy. <laughs> and then at the end of the day, I found out that I had the eighth fastest time. So I didn't care which position I was going to come as long as I was going to give a point. Every point counts as a championship. Every single point. And at the end of the day, you know, first day class, where one point, Miggy. I mean, I'm going to be nowhere. One nigga, nigga, point, Miggy. And then that year, 2006, motivated me to say I wanted more. So second year class four, I participated more, in more than one event because my first year, I only did 100 and 200 four by one. In the second year, I did the high jump, I did long jump, I did the 70 meter hurdles, and I also participated in the four by one. And at that championship, my mother was able to come to her first boys and girls championship where I wrote the class four high jump record. Um, I medaled in the long jump. I came fourth in the, the, the 70 hurdles, I remember, and we medaled in the four by one. So I did pretty well. And then every year I started to get, you can't say greedy and greedy every year. I wanted to get medals. I wanted to give maximum points. So I started, you know, to do different, different events in training. And then I settled down with the long jump, high jump, four, four by four and the four by one. And then it was just glory days. And in 2012, I had a disappointed year. We didn't win the Boys and Girls Championship. But in that year, I became the world champion, the world junior champion. Wow. I, I, I'm mm -hmm. listening to all of these events and I'm just like, why didn't you just pick up help? Like high jump, long jump, hurdles, four by one. Did you ever consider oh. it? Yes, I considered it one time, but I didn't know if they had um, a specific coach to do help us. Hep, hep athlete coaching, hep athlete, because in yeah. some countries they focus really on hep athlete. So, looking at Jamaica, they're only focused on sprint at the time, you know. We weren't even focused on chores when I wanted to consider Very hep true. athlete, <laughs> hep, yeah, in 2012. So, an incident happened in 2011 where I got to do the four hurdles. I participated at Champs, I came fourth. And then I started taking it up serious. It was, a, it was a hard event at the time, but I was saying that it was fun. 2012, when I won the World June, I decided to pursue my career in UTEC. And I decided, you know what? I'm going to stick with the four hurdles. I think I can do great in the four hurdles. Anything I put my mind to, I'm going to do good in it because I did four events at Champs. I did help at um, Panam Games. So I just stick with the four hurdles. One question that I always... Uh, we've interviewed a couple of hurdlers on the stage. Um, I've always asked them, why did you choose hurdles out of all of the events? Seeing that you have not only dabbled in a few before, was it an, an instant feeling? Did you recognize you really love this event? Um, for me, the hurdles chose me. <laughs> <laughs> Our coach, the, my coach chose the chose it for me because I really and truly I love long jump I really love long jump but based on how I performed in 2012 at the World Junior Games I think the coach has decided like this is going to be your event because even though I participated at long jump at junior levels at the character games and the World Junior Games and the Youth Olympic Games I always placed in the top eight but never medal and 2012 was my first major medal in an individual event. So the hurdles chose me. Okay, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. So we talk about champs, we talk about all of the accolades that you've achieved there. You said you went to UTEC after. Explain that experience. Ah, that ex I was starstruck. Starstruck. Because when you see these athletes on TV, 
you're killing up yourself at the Jamaica Invitational to get autographs, but you're actually there training with them, passing them every morning at South Family, Walker, Shelley, and Fraser, Kali, Spencer, you know the works. You're yes. passing them day and in, and you're actually training with these people. You're lifting gym the same place as them. I was literally starstruck and I was motivated because each and every person there has a story. And their story is not like they came at UTEC and run past the same day. They had to build their self up. So I was really motivated. I was really excited for my journey. And it was just an amazing journey there. Yeah. And that, that, that must be a surreal moment. Also, the fact that because you're training amongst these people, even if you aren't doing the same events as them, being motivated and seeing how they train and stay dedicated to the sport must uplift you so definitely <laughs> so um we know that you're now an olympian the olympian <laughs> Russell, explain your thought process going into this olympic season barring the covid uh, or considering the covid factor well it was very different as everybody know um track meets were limited there was no spectators but thankfully for the 2020 season and for MVP, they um, actually got some track meets in and to get us prepped, you know, knowing that there's not going to be spectators. This is how track meet is going to be like. This is what we have to do to perform well. So coming into 2021 season, I was very mentally prepared for anything that was going to happen. If there's going to be spectators or there's not going to be any spectators or if it's just going to be me alone at the start line. And I was really motivated because 20, 2016 was my first Olympic Games. It didn't end it how I wanted to end because of injuries. So 2021, I was really motivated to say, I want to make my second Olympic finals. I want to get a medal. And I'm going to pull this off by training hard. And leading it up, I was really focused on myself. I started to go back to my high school days when I was just trying to, we were just having fun when I wasn't listening to the voices outside, because, you know, social media has a lot to do with our mental health. We see fans put us down, we see fans put us up, and sometimes we take things very literal, and that's me. I take things very literal. I always want to do my best, and if I feel like I disappoint anyone who wants to see um, good for me, I go in a shell. And this year, it was just all about me. It was all about listening to my body, listening to my coach, listening to the staff, and just putting myself first. So today, was this year, sorry, was just about mental strength. Well, that's actually very admirable because there are lots of people who know they have that issue and don't acknowledge it. So the fact that you are aware of it and created a plan to succeed irrespective mm -hmm. of all of the the noise is it's very commendable now i personally want to know about life in tokyo at tokyo 2020 olympics how was it because as in you don't get to interact as much as you would have before and you actually got to experience some form of olympic experience um pre-covid so how was it this time around it was really different. I'm just really upset that the persons who made their first Olympics didn't get to experience how Olympics would be because every day you wake up before seven o'clock, you have to do your COVID test to drop off to the COVID center. We didn't get to experience the opening ceremony like how you want to experience with the crowd and interact with others and taking picture. Mm -hmm. And when we're eating dinner, is you have a shield in front of you. So when you're talking, you can hardly hear the person from you have to be shouting. It was just a different scenery because my first Olympics would get to play games. This Olympic, it was limited. So it was just a total different thing, doing COVID tests each and every day, ensure that you have on your mask. Sometimes you have on your mask in your room because you're rooming with persons from different clubs and you're not sure who they're interacting with. So you have to have on your mask for a couple of three days or, you know, two when you're in the room till the guys get accustomed to each other. It was just different. 
but because I've already enjoyed the first Olympic, it wasn't that bad for me. It was just, I was just excited to be there. Yeah. Do you think that they did um, the best they could to still allow you guys to enjoy it some, in some way? Yes, I really have to commend them about it. It was to pull off a big game like that. You know, there was no spectators un as unless there are people inside of the village already. And it, yeah. was, it wasn't it was bad because they made the stadium in a color to let it seem that there were people in the stand. So yeah. they did, you know, they did very well. I have to commend them about that. And the experience was similar for me. It could have been better, you know, when you're interacting with other people. But, it, you know, it's the same exchanging <laughs> pins saying hi to persons, taking pictures, but most of the pictures they're taking with your mask. Um, so talk to us and or give us a run through of your events at these games. Um, how did you feel going over these hurdles or how do you feel going over hurdles in general? What are your thoughts? Do you think, you know, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, well, I'm an accident pro. I don't even have two left foot because if I trip <laughs> over a pebble, I drop in. So going to the hurdles, like this year was, I was doing well. And a couple of weeks before going into Olympics, the training, well, the village, I had an accident where I fell over the hurdles and I chipped my knee and it was swollen, but I was still trying to train with it to try and flex the knee because it was my tray leg. Yeah. It was really hard. And I know that these ladies that I'm going against, they're listen. <laughs> one, I was really surprised I didn't expect 51 to run solo at the Olympic Games and my experience there leading up it was just focusing on me because everyone had their top three already my yeah. personal goal was to ensure that I was in that Olympic finals and to ensure that I came out that Olympic finals with a personal best so as I said before it was just you know, focusing on me, focusing my own lane, focusing my hurdles and ensure that I don't chip up off over any, like I was doing in training, because in training, I, 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 I listen, I've been licking hurdles, I've been falling. So it was just in my zone because everyone already had their top three already. I just wanted to ensure that I was in the top eight with the best. Yes, lovely guys. So first, let's say family commend um, Janice <laughs> for accomplishing um, the goal that she, that she set out. Now, we talked about all of the, the processes. Did you experience any challenges this season um, as it relates to injuries, mental health, um, something like that? Well, this year, luckily, my injuries weren't so serious like previous years that would have me out for months to two months. Yeah. Um, when I see other athletes taking mental health serious, and you hardly see Jamaican athletes coming up front about it. I started to, you know, sit back, um, started to have meetings with myself, started to talk to myself, started to write down notes and see what I can do to better myself because no one knows you like how you know yourself. And I believe that also was a help for me. My injuries this year wasn't that major. It would just have me out for training the most three days. So I was really happy about that because I wasn't falling behind too much. And I started to, you know, to block out myself. Like for the Olympics, I was not on social media. This is the first time I ever go to a, world, a major championship where I wasn't on social media. I ensure that I love off every social media and to focus on the task ahead. Trying to understand and communicate more with my team. Because, you know, sometimes you get instructions. It, you think you understand and by the time you go to the, the starting line, you forget everything. So I was communicating a lot this year. Even yeah. if I think that I understand something, I try my best to tell him that you have to make it extremely clear for me. I treated this year like it was my last year, like I'm not coming back. And I like how I attacked this year. I was attacking it like I want to attack the hurdles. I was attacking it fearlessly. And there's a lot of more room for improvement. I'm just really excited for this year. I just, it's just a tip of the ice <laughs> that I displayed in 2021. And 
I just want other athletes and more athletes, even not even athletes overall, people overall to consider to put their self first in everything that you do. And our mental health will do so much for us when we focus on ourselves. Okay, lovely. I hope you guys are taking tips, notes and um, from this, this great athlete. So Olympics happened. You set out to go and achieve your goals. Um, talk to us about after Olympics. Um, did you continue to run races? What was where did, did you just want to zone down, relax, enjoy time at the beach, come back to Jamaica? Tell us about that. Um, okay, after the Olympics, I continued my season. My season ended in September. And based on how I performed in the Olympics, I wanted more. Yes, I wanted a personal best, but I was saying to myself that, listen, I, I can run faster. So... At training, I was still trying my best to fix some things that I know that I could have done better at the Olympic Games. Um, my body didn't allow that. That's the next thing that as athletes we need to consider. We need to listen to our body. We need to understand our body and know when our body breaks down in which part of the season, which point in the season. And I feel that after the, the Olympics, um, running so much rounds because I also did the four by four. I realized that after the Olympics, going into September, my body started to break down. I couldn't push my body the way I wanted it to, but I still continue the season. And it's just for me to just understand that at certain point of the season, I have to, you know, relax, breathe in, recruit myself and start again so I can push my body. And you know, it, it was just an eye-opener to see how our body is, how easily it is to break down and how hard it is to go back into the zone that you wanted to go back. And yeah. I realized that nutrition, especially when you're not in Jamaica and you're in Europe or anywhere you are in the world, camping out and, you know, competing, nutrition takes um, key in our, in, in our day and day and as a track and field athlete and I don't really take nutrition serious <laughs> so that's the next thing that I need to do for next season and I believe that is going to be really great for me and for my performance to be better well I am looking forward to it I'm sure the sports life I'm really looking forward to see bigger and better um results um and it's also seeing you mature as a person in and of itself because it's very admirable um if you're to give us one word to describe this season because a lot happened that you are proud of one word one word spectacular why <laughs> let me tell you 29 2020 i got covid in september i didn't have any symptoms so i didn't even know i had covid it's the reason why i found out because i had a meeting room and i did my covid test and it came up positive so Coming from COVID, losing a lot of weight, training differently than like I, I used to train, making my second Olympic team, making my second final, coming out with a personal best, running the four by four relay, coming home with a medal, and ending my season in the top eight. Spectacular, spectacular, spectacular. And no major injuries. No very, very major injuries. To hear that. That's, 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 <laughs> that's, that's very, I, I, I'm very happy to hear that. But yeah, because you know, when people are grading their season, um, yeah. they will say they'll be disappointed because they don't get any medal in their individual events or no medal at all. But for yeah. me, when you set personal goals, you don't care about the outside because some people's personal goal is even if, is making a team. And if they make that team, their season is a 10 out of 10. So that is how I look on my season. And this is how I look on life now. I make small goals. And whenever I meet those goals, it's perfect. Because at the end of the day, I met what I wanted to do. Yes. Yeah, small steps are better than no steps. I say it all the yes. time. So that's basically the end of this interview. Um, you liar. <laughs> so ask me something else man <laughs> Just, um, nice. we have a bonus feature coming up so mm -hmm. we're going to get to know what you like 
a little bit more, um, see the fun side of Geneve. So mm -hmm. catch us back in a little bit, guys. Hey guys, welcome to the bonus episode and we're back with Geneve Russell. She never wanted to finish the interview, but we told her, you're not leaving yet. We're going to talk to you a little bit. So we're going to play a game. We're going to play this or that. We're going to ask some questions, get to, you know, see who is Geneve behind the scenes. So, Geneve, do you rather a night out or a relaxing day at home? Relaxing day at home. Okay. Do you rather champagne or hard liquor? Champagne. <laughs> fancy, fancy. <laughs> I'm lightheaded, so champagne. <laughs> Do you rather brunches or um night parties? Brunches. Food is a must. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about fashion. Does Geneve like <laughs> does Geneve like dresses or does she like jeans? Uh, dresses. Show up the figure. Dresses. <laughs> hot girl, hot girl. <laughs> yeah. Do you like food? Okay, on a regular day, would you rather wearing um normal sports clothes or would you rather so, like casual fits casual fits okay for training are you one of those girls that just put on anything um brand brand switch up and have adidas shirt nike shoes this that that or are you the type of girl that has everything in color matching you know have to match have to match does that make you feel better training knowing that you, you know? Yeah, you know, cute. It's my cute. work. You know, you know they're going to see a picture, put you on yeah, the blog. I'm to, yeah, I'm going to work. You, you don't know who's coming around to snap your picture. You know what I mean? Yeah? <laughs> Definitely have to match. Tell us a little bit about what. What's your favorite genre of music? What do, what do you use before races that like keeps you pumping, keeps you going? Okay, it, well, I don't think nobody knows this. I'm a Christian. Um, I got baptized in January. So before music, before, well, well, no, I still listen to R&B. I listen to hip hop, the clean version, guys. <laughs> and a little bit of gospel and dance because I want something to keep me Home, you know, during the warm up. So they said the dance song like Ding Dong, um, Drake, some Her, <laughs> The Works, yeah, and Gospel. Okay, so what's your favorite song right now? What's something that as you get up, you want to hear it? Or if you could hear a song, all about, what song would you want to listen to? Givian for tonight. Givian, listen to it, guys. For tonight, Givian, <laughs> Givian. <laughs> Um, but my gospel music, it's definitely would be what, which one now? Let me choose. You are my strength. Yeah, you are my strength. Can you sing? Uh, it depends on the song, you know. Okay, no, sometimes they have high pitch, low pitch. <laughs> but it just depends. It depends. Can you dance? They say you listen to Ding Dong. Sure. <laughs> I don't know why Ding Dong never hire me, but we can do a little thing. Can do a little fling. Yeah, I can do a little dirt. Can yeah. do a thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay, let's talk about sports. World Champs, Olympics. Olympics. Diamond League, Olympics. I mean, Diamond League, Diamond World League. Champs. World Champs. World Record. Or first place? First place. Reason? You might not get the first place again. Because you can break the world at any time. 
you can't break the world record. You know, a diamond league, you can't break the world record is at a track meet. So, first place. Okay. First place. In events, if you were excluding four hurdles, if you're supposed to do any other events, what would it be? Long jump. Long jump or triple jump? Yes. Long jump. <laughs> um, see what other hard questions we can ask you. As a kid, were you the type of person that liked to play outside games or were you somebody that was in the house with your family? Outside. May I consider a little? Outside. <laughs> Inside of to me. <laughs> so seeing that you're a country girl, right? And you, you're basically in town now. Mm -hmm. you, do you still prefer the country over town? I still prefer country. Town life is so hard. <laughs> so crowded country. Okay. And one word to describe who is... Oh, actually, before that, how did you get the name Jelly? I got the name Jellyfish in grade three at my primary school. There was this young man. I can't remember his name, but his nickname was Kenny. And he started Mandible School in January. And I don't know what he said to me, but I did pinch him. And he said, I pinch him hot. And he's still like jellyfish. And from <laughs> here, it stuck. And I was going to a, a primary school that had grade nine. And Homewood was a grade nine achievement school so when i lived there in grade six the same people from grade nine who knew me doing sports carried the name over to homewood okay lovely lovely one word that or tell us something that we don't we don't know about you um i'm a cry baby my heart easy to see yeah i'm a cry and one American word, <laughs> last, last question, one word to describe Jenny. My, oh, my, it's so much. Um, humble, I'll use humble. Lovely, lovely. Well, the sports latte is, we were very, very grateful that we got to talk to someone of your caliber today. Um, Continue to watch our episodes, guys. Subscribe, like, share, comment, the whole works. You know it. Just click the button. It's not that hard. Just click it. And the bell. Notification bell. Yes. Ring the bell. <laughs> so it was great talking to you today. I'm very happy that we got to talk to you. Um, and I think I'm going to title the episode, Small Steps Are Better Than No Steps. Yes. Because that's kind of what I learned from it. And actually, before we go, what is something that you have to say to athletes out there that are, I think COVID don't look like going anywhere for now. So what is it that you, <laughs> you have to say to them right now or some advice to give to them? Okay, to my upcoming, to my young, to my seniors, always put yourself first. Always express how you feel if you're not comfortable with something. Always communicate with a loved one, your coach, about your body. Always put yourself first because no one else will. Always train hard and have fun and train smart. And never, ever, ever give up because you're going to have bad days. But you're not going to stay down forever. And the closer you are to your goal and you give up, that is when you're going to regret it. And you don't want regrets in your life. So just always put yourself first. Focus on you, have fun, and remember that there's never going to be a rainy day forever. Sunshine will come. So just keep your head up. Thank you so, so, so much. I'm very, I'm very, very happy. Um, guys, if you don't know, it's like 12 o'clock in the day and I feel you're energized. So continue my day. Yes. So thank you, Jenny, for talking to this person today. And thank you. See you on the track soon. <laughs> Thank you. Later. Bye. Bye.